As many people around the country are discussing whether a major infrastructure bill would provide solutions to two major problems, getting highways, bridges, water systems, and the environment up to date, and at the same time putting a large number of newly unemployed back to work, I'd like to recall for you one of President Franklin Roosevelt's first programs in his New Deal and how it worked in this area. Our story really begins back in the 1920s when Knoxville business leader David Chapman, for whom Chapman Highway and Mount Chapman had been named, and a lot of other people were concerned about the logging industry destroying the Smokies. So they began to organize. They wanted to make the vast forest a national park. Almost two-thirds of this virgin forest had already been clear-cut by loggers. Education and fundraising for the park began in earnest during the Great Depression, and as land was required by 1934, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was established, although many of the logging companies had already shut down. And that was a double whammy for the folks who lived in Sevier and other nearby counties, because they had earned a great amount of their money from those logging companies. Now, there were fewer logging jobs available, and many of them couldn't earn a living. From sawyers to grocers to bankers, the suffering was great. The Energy Conservation Work Program, better known as the Civilian Conservation Corps, was proposed by President Roosevelt at the end of March 1933, and it passed Congress by a voice vote that same day. So by April 5th, the President had tapped Robert Fechner of Chattanooga to head the Civilian Conservation Corps. Fechner had been instrumental in developing several state and national parks. Although he had only an elementary school education, he had risen to become the Vice President of the International Association of Machinists. The Civilian Conservation Corps provided single young men between 17 and 28 with shelter, clothing, food, and wage. Pay was $30 a month, that's just under $600 in today's money, of which the worker kept $5 and the government set $25 back to his family. At first, the young men lived in temporary tents, but as the program became more successful and it appeared that uh, it would be around for a while, those tents soon became wooden barracks with dining halls and education centers. Improving literacy and training were a big part of the CCC. Only a third of the labor force had less than eight years of schooling, and only 11% had high school diplomas. The first of four Sevier County CCC camps was opened in the Greenbrier Valley, near where the Rhododendron Creek flows into the middle fork of the Little Pigeon River. It was fittingly named for David Chapman. Another camp was at Elkmont, and there were two in the Sugarlands area. <laughs> yes, that dude is really wrestling a playful wild bear. This photo, to show you the popularity of the camp, was actually taken on a visitor's day. Later, the CCCs were open to include veterans of World War I. These older men brought experience and know-how that the younger single men could learn from. These young men built or improved some 150 trails throughout the mountains. They carved out roads, built fire towers in the accommodations at their base. They raised seeds, planted trees, cleaned streams and rivers, and stocked them with fish. They built the visitor's center at Sugarland and Lacuna Lufty Village over in North Carolina. They built several campgrounds, including the one at the Chimneys, Elkmont, and Greenbrier. They built comfort stations and constructed several bridges, including the most impressive Little Riverstone Bridge in Elkmont. Time Magazine, February 6, 1939, hailed the program because it improved fiscal condition, heightened morale, and ensured employment. That's Robert Fickner on the cover. By the time the CCC program had ended, more than 70,000 Tennesseans had participated out of some 3 million nationally. A lot of young men took advantage of that program before they became famous, 
like actors Raymond Burr, Robert Mitchum, and Walter Matthau, our baseball stars like Stan Musial and Red Shandies, and then there was Pioneer Space Age test pilot Chuck Yeager. He worked in the CCC program too. You can learn more about the Civilian Conservation Corps in the Sevier County History Center, located on the third floor of the King Family Library in downtown Sevierville. And if you or your father was a member of the CCC, we'd love to hear your stories and record them for future folks to learn how your remarkable contributions helped make the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and this country what it is today. <laughs>